This time of year, it's only natural to want to spend as much time as possible outdoors, all warm and happy in the bright sunshine. <laughs> Yet, as we all know, that also has a dark side, you know, skin cancer and wrinkles. That's why it's important to do all you can before you head outside to protect yourself. We recently stopped by Dakota Dermatology to talk with dermatologist Dr. Kendra Watson about how to make sure that good sunshine doesn't do nasty stuff to our skin. Thanks so much, Dr. Kendra Watson, for having us out here to Dakota Dermatology. Oh, happy to be here. So when talking about sunscreen, really, why should we be using this? You know, I think that's really kind of the whole po point of talking about this, and I'm so happy you guys are doing a segment on it. We have really good literature in, our, in dermatology and in medicine in general that uh, increased rates of sunburn, and specifically blistering sunburns, have... Um, are very directly linked to skin cancers, including melanoma. And so that is really important. If you can prevent that, then you can reduce your risk of skin cancer. Now, I didn't even know this was a thing, but apparently there's two types of sunscreen. There's physical and chemical. Yeah. So What's that's the difference? Good, that's a really good question, and I think something that people don't know a lot about. And so the chemical sunscreens have kind of long chemical names that start with O or H. Uh, there's a lot of different kinds. And what they do is kind of absorbs the sun's rays so your skin doesn't. Now, physical sunscreens are either made of zinc or titanium, and what those do is actually repel the sun's light, almost like tiny little little. Um, microscopic mirrors kind of direct the sun's light elsewhere. So which one do we want to be using? You know, honestly, and I hate to kind of say this, but it's probably the physical sunscreens that are the best, the ones with the zinc and titanium. And the reason I hate to say that is because they can be kind of stick and um, sticky and thick to put on, excuse me. So they're not the most easy to apply. So how can we look at a label? How do we really know what type of sun sunscreen we're getting? Yeah, you know, I think if, you know, if you, so this is just something I grabbed from my house. My, my daughter's using this right now. And if you look on the back, oftentimes this specific one has a combination of chemical and physical ones, but the really the words you want to see are zinc and titanium. So does SPF matter? You know, it does to an extent. Um, if you look at a curve that kind of says how much SPF blocks out how much sun, really it, pr it mostly peaks at 30. The numbers higher than that, 50, 90, 110, really do help, but only by fractions of a percent and blocking out more sun. Now I want to get into some different tips for applying and how often we should be doing it, but first, what is better, spray or lotion sunscreen? You know, that's another good question because I know sprays are really popular because they're easy to use. Um, I really think that for larger surface areas like your whole legs or your back, especially if you're alone, the sprays have a place. They're certainly better than nothing. The trick is you have to apply them very, very close and then kind of rub it in. I think we've all seen people who are, the air is getting more of the spray than they are. So if you kind of apply really close and then rub it in, the spray is probably fine. But if you can invest the the time and putting on a cream, it's a little bit better. So give us some tips now for applying that cream sunscreen. Yeah, you know, I think, and this kind of links back to how much SPF is appropriate. You really need a decent amount of SPF 30 to make it protective. If you're going to be the person who only wants to put on a little dime size because you don't like the feel of it, then airing more towards Earth's higher numbers is important. No matter what you do, um, always use a little bit more than you think, and we really need to be reapplying every 90 minutes to two hours when we're outside. What about if we are in a pool? How long should we wait before getting in? And then should we be applying more often? You know, I think ideally what you do is like apply your sunscreen on your way to the pool. And I think that gives you a little bit of time to have that sunscreen kind of soak in so you're not going to just wipe it all off. Um, but usually the ones that say like sport or waterproof actually do, I think, a pretty good job of staying on. Now, when you're going through the aisle and you're looking at all these different types of sunscreen, I've noticed that there's types like special for your face. Is that recommended or does it really not make a difference? You know, it probably doesn't make a huge difference. I think the ones that are more formulated for the face are likely geared to have less oil or what we call comedogenic ingredients in it, which means they don't cause acne. So people who are a little bit acne prone might gear themselves a little bit more towards something that's more lighter and for the face specifically. What are some other ways that we can also protect ourselves from the sun? Yeah, I'm really glad you brought this up because a lot of this, um, a lot of people think that sunscreen should be secondary and all of the protective 
protective clothing and shade seeking should really be our primary form. So really avoiding the peak hours of sun, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. is when those rays are very, very dangerous for our skin. So if you can go golfing early in the morning or go to the pool after four o'clock, something like that. And then I think a lot of people don't realize that there's sun protective clothing that has sunscreen built in. That's called UPF and it's available at most sporting goods stores or online as well. Sun, it, wait, it blocks with the sunscreen or the sun? Yeah, it, within the garment. And so that way, if you're wearing a light enough piece of clothing, the sun can actually get through that, oh. which is not what we really want to hear. And so if you want to be extra cautious, then you can wear, you know, if you're like gardening, you can wear a little, a, like, a, like a shawl or something that has that in, ingredient built into the fabric. Okay, interesting. Yeah. I had no idea that was even a thing. Um, let's talk a little bit more about what happens if you do get a, a sunburn, what should you do? You know, I think the most important thing is to um, obviously avoid if you can, but if you if you do get a sunburn, I think drinking a lot of water is really important and probably just putting a really basic, boring, bland moisturizer on when you get home, when you realize that there's some damage that's happened. Um, certainly if you are in pain, Tylenol, ibuprofen, anti-inflammatories can help. If you have a topical steroid that would be safe to use on that body part, you could use that too. Aloe vera can be helpful. You know, I think it's more of a soothing relief more so than anything that will actually help to reverse any of the damage that's been done. If you get a sunburn that is extremely bad and I hate to admit that I've yeah. I've experienced this where you barely you can't even sleep you can't shower like it's so painful mm -hmm. is there a certain point where you need to seek medical attention you for know, that? That's a good question I, I think honestly most of the treatment that anyone whether it's in a dermatology office primary court care or if you were to go to acute care would probably just recommend those things I said you know your skin is going to heal itself over time but you just have to give it the chance to do so lots of water and kind of emoliating the skin and make sure it's being loved up a little bit. All right, well, thank you so much for the advice yeah. and tips. Happy to, happy to give anybody some tips to help protect themselves this summer. Kelloland Media Group employees are hitting the town today. So why will you see us next to our employees wearing t-shirts and doing good works in the middle of a workday? We've got a good reason. You'll find out why after this short break. <laughs> 